Fox Sports NBA analyst Chris Broussard joining us this morning. Chris, do you expect LeBron to outplay Jimmy Butler? Yes, I do, Jen. Uh, look, obviously, LeBron's number one motivation is to win the championship, his fourth ring. But Jimmy Butler gave him extra motivation on Sunday. Number one, as you said, he outplayed LeBron. Number two, he talked trash with the you're in trouble. But he said a few other things. He also said later that they're going to win game four and even this thing up at 2-2, essentially guaranteeing another victory. He's also getting credit for guarding LeBron. And a lot of people are saying, hey, he, he, he forced LeBron into many of those eight turnovers. The Heat have found something. Then Jimmy Butler talked about how that LeBron has gotten the best of him in the past too many times, but now Butler has a, a different group of guys with him, implying that LeBron only got the best of him because he had a better supporting cast, <laughs> which is ridiculous. So I do expect LeBron to come out and play an exceptional game. I think he has 28 points, 12 rebounds, and 9 or 10 assists. I think he helps the Lakers win. I'll throw this out there, though. It is possible that Jimmy Butler outscores LeBron, and here's why. LeBron has another superstar to share the scoring load with. I expect Anthony Davis to follow up that mediocre game or poor game in game three with at least 30 points. Every time in the playoffs that he's had a bad offensive game, he's averaged 40. He had 43 uh, one game earlier and then 37 following another poor game. So... AD will score a lot of points, so I think that'll limit how much LeBron scores. Jimmy Butler, of course, especially if Bam out of Bayou doesn't play, Jimmy Butler has to score at least 30 for the Heat to have a shot. He's going to have the ball in his hands. He's going to be making all the plays like he did in game three. So he could have good numbers, especially scoring-wise, but LeBron will play the better game and lead <laughs> Lakers to victory. Yes, I expect LeBron to outplay Jimmy Butler tonight. I'm not, and I agree with you, Chris, not necessarily scoring because Anthony Davis, they, they've run the offense through Anthony Davis all year, and especially in these playoffs. There's a reason why Anthony Davis averaged more points in the regular season and has averaged more points in the playoffs than LeBron James. They run the ball through. And if I, if I, if, if, I can't remember the first game that they played, they went to uh, AD like seven straight possessions, and he had more points. I mean, he had like the first 14, 16 points. Because that's what he goes do. And then, once AD gets going, LeBron James will see what needs to be done uh, after that and go from there. But I think I don't think they'll be as careless or as reckless with the basketball as they were. They understand what the Heat represent. They got reckless. They got careless. And before they knew it, they were later in the ball game and they were having to dig uphill. And even though Jimmy had this historic game and they turned the ball over 20 times, and AD nor LeBron played particularly well, AD because of foul trouble, Braun because of the turnovers, they still had a two-point lead with nine minutes left in the ballgame, and they completely fell apart after that. So I like where the, the Lakers are, and let this sink in. It took 52 games for someone to outscore, out-rebound, out-assist LeBron, not only from the opposing team, even his team. I feel good. It mm. won't happen again. Mm. So what, we got a victory <laughs> parade game tonight? Lakers in five. Lakers in five. That's what I predicted. I believe Chris predicted Lakers in five, correct? Yes. As I recall. Yes. So, yes. I'm with both of you times ten. I want to challenge LeBron to have a king night tonight because this could be a legacy-type game for LeBron. They're in some dangerous territory right now because the Heat have been playing angrier and angrier. I, I remind you also, LeBron walked off the floor 10 seconds prematurely, and I don't think the Heat will take that well. And then LeBron disagreed with Jimmy Butler about the origin of the trash talk. LeBron said, no, I didn't start it. He started it. Well, somebody's not telling the truth. <laughs> so I think the Heat will come out tonight and play even angrier than they did in Game 3. I told Shannon earlier... I love LeBron the most when he plays angry. And I, I'm talking about focused angry. I'm not talking about out of control, want right. to fight you angry. I'm talking about, you know, when LeBron comes out and says, 
I am all business tonight, and I am in attack mode from my first dribble. Oh, you want to see him like he was in Denver when he came out the first half and dropped 29. You want to see that, LeBron. Yeah, and I don't even know what got into him that <laughs> night, but tonight <laughs> is deeper water because this Heat team could be dangerous if it gets to 2-2. Two to two. If you let them seize momentum, they will run with it. And Jimmy Butler in Game 3 obviously outplayed LeBron in every way, shape, and form on both ends of the floor, and he called out LeBron. So now it's up to LeBron to stand up to the challenge. It's up to LeBron to get even with Jimmy Butler. And Shannon says, well, it's, it's beneath LeBron's dignity. He, de he doesn't have one-on-one -on -one contests with anybody. But I got to tell you, this is about as one-on-one -on -one as it's ever going to get for the King because Jimmy Butler is the whole show for the other team. They are it's, it's an epic mismatch, except for Jimmy Butler. I love his intangibles. I've never loved his overall talent. He's not the most gifted player. He's not the best shooter. He just knows how to win basketball games. And he also is very clever and creative in creating shots. And he knows how to create two-point shots because the incredible thing about his 40-point triple-double, he didn't even try a three because he's not very good from three. That's amazing. Okay? It is amazing. And on the other end, they found a new strategy. They scrapped the zone, and Jimmy said, let me take LeBron. And how did he guard him? He guarded him in the paint. He dared him. He went back to the old San Antonio Spurs philosophy. Dare him to shoot threes. And in the fourth quarter, LeBron had three uncontested, wide-open threes, and he lebricked them. They didn't even come close. And you got to make those shots tonight because Jimmy's going to hang back and he's going to bother you in the paint. He's going to try to get up with you and at least get a hand in your face and a hand on the basketball. And he forced LeBron into, well, shock me, two travels in the fourth quarter where he just sort of awkwardly lost his... board chair off him. Okay. Well, he did. And it's like, huh? What, what am I doing? And he sort of stumbled across the lane. And the, the referees are like, I'm sorry, that's a travel. Well, I'd never seen that before, and he did it twice in the fourth quarter, and it was all about Jimmy Butler. So I, I do believe LeBron will come out with smoke coming out of his ears, nose, eyes. I, I think he needs to get even with Jimmy because Jimmy is everything to the heat, and I, if, if LeBron wants to, he should take him. And if LeBron needs help on defense, he should get it because I think they should try to double Jimmy more than they did in game three and get the ball out of his hands. Shannon says, well, they got too many snipers. Well, I'd, I'd rather the snipers try to beat me than Jimmy Butler because he is highly capable. Well, to mention, uh, before you go, Chris, they did do that against Jamal Murray. They trapped him, and they trapped James they Harden. Yep. And they says, okay, Russ, do your thing. Everybody else can beat us. Okay, they play Jokic straight up. But they got the ball out of Murray's hands they did. for the last two games, and it worked to their favor. So they, they, they just might. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, they, they may go that route. And, and what else is that without Bam out of Bayou in, you know they had a shooters all over the floor. Kelly Olenek playing as a big man shooting threes. That took the Lakers shot blockers away from the rim. And so Jimmy Butler could drive and not have to finish over the seven footers. When Bam comes back and then AD or, or Dwight can stay near the rim, that'll be different for him. But that's why he was able to score 40 without even taking a three-point shot. We know he's not much of a three-point shooter, but he could get to the rim and finish without the bigs there. So that was a big factor as well. So are you with Shannon? Do you think they're better off with Kelly Olenek in the lineup over Bam? I, I can't. I will not go that far. I mean, look, if they win the night and Olenek has a great game, you know, Bam doesn't play, then maybe you can make an argument. But Bam does a lot. Obviously, he's great defensively. He's a really good passer. He doesn't shoot the three either, you know, but I, I can't go that far because he's so tough and he's he's kind of like the inspirate one of the inspirational he leaders he's of their, that team. Yeah, he's the um, power source. He he's the heart and soul. Yep. But my my, my point is in if a they vacuum. win tonight, if 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 Miami wins tonight, obviously you got a series. Because beyond other things, Jimmy Butler will have trash talk LeBron and outplayed him and live to tell about it. Yep. About it. So that'll be a factor. Uh, Miami already is confident and feeling good about itself. They'll be even more higher in that regard if they win tonight. We're going to snuff that out.
For me, Chris, in a vacuum, Bam is better than Olenek. Bam is better than Miles Leonard. But what he does, but what Bam, what they give them that Bam doesn't is live three-point shooters. And so now while you have Dwight Howard in the game, you neutralize that because he's not near the paint. He doesn't get the rebounds. He doesn't challenge right. shots. AD is away from the basket. He doesn't challenge. He doesn't get opportunity to rebound because they have to guard those guys. Bam is pick and roll, pick to the basket. Those guys are pick and roll and can pick and pop which Bam does not do particularly well. So I just think they're different. They might not be better, but they're a very different team. And Bam in the lineup plays to the Lakers' hand. The bigs are around the basket, can challenge shots, rebound, as opposed to being away from the basket. Mm. But don't worry about all that. We're going to take care of that tonight. Mm. I'll be happy in the morning. I'll be happy in the well, morning. Your co-star better rise and shine. Tonight. I ain't worried about AD. Hey. AD got this. Hey. 65. If, if he's guarded by Myers Leonard or Kelly Olenek, he should get whatever he wants. You want two cases? He should go for 40. You no, two, I don't. I want two cases. LeBron and AD could get at least 65. This should be a wipeout. You should win by 25. Okay. No, 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 no. You no, said 15. six, Shannon, though. Huh? You said Fine. six. Oh, I did. Maybe you said six, so yeah. maybe they lose tonight. But no, no, I... That, I, was, I was superstitious, Chris. I oh. keep saying six because I said six the first second, <laughs> and we want him in five. Six. Superstitious, that's what it comes down to? <laughs> yep. All right, good to know. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show, and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.